everybody and welcome to another episode of Ask Jamine. I'm Nikki Willis and I'm Jamine. And this is Mario Escobedo of Model Mortgage. A lot of you come to us and you want to buy a home. And one of the first things that we ask is, how are you financing it? And Mario is here to help us answer all these questions about being a loan officer and what a loan officer has to do in your process. So let's get started. Here we go. So the question of the day is, what does a loan officer do? And we have Mario here. <laughs> and before we get into this, I want to remind you to subscribe if you haven't already. That's right. Hit that button right there in the corner. Hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell over there in the corner too. Just to remind you every time that we have something to upload and we're always uploading some good stuff. So you will never miss a thing. All right, Mario. Well, first of all, <laughs> thank you for coming. You're very welcome. Um, Mario, you guys are in our, we're actually in the same office. We're neighbors. Yeah, we are neighbors. neighbors. <laughs> yeah, right. um, yeah, so he's across the hall from the Crazy <laughs> Willis team. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but you guys, you your whole team yeah. um, is with Model Mortgage. So Correct. Um, I don't want to do the introduction. I will let you. Yeah, it's been, been almost five years now where uh, our family team that, uh, you know, has 30 years of mortgage experience, literally here in Las Vegas, yeah. Henderson, in Nevada, uh, we've been with Model Mortgage One now five years. Okay. So really building, um, you know, a solid foundation, not just of our own, which we kind of brought with us, mm -hmm. um, but with the team here um, at Remax Advantage and all the realtors that are here. Uh, because of course, teamwork is the most important thing when it comes to this industry, as I'm sure a lot of you are aware. So indeed, indeed, yeah. we always talk about um, how our home buyers need to have a good team. Hundred um, percent, mm -hmm. and that is so important. Uh, we work uh, in tandem with our loan officers, so when we're working with you, Mario, it's always a great experience. Yeah. You guys are on it, and we as realtors love that. So when you are looking for a loan officer. Um, if it's not Mario, let's see. <laughs> let's open it. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, but make sure they're knowledgeable. Make sure they um, are able to answer your questions. Make sure they're knowledgeable about the uh, first time home buyer programs and all the other programs that are in this industry. And Mario, you guys are fantastic. You guys oh, do an you. excellent job in that. Um, but let's really get into sure. what a loan officer does. Okay. So when we, um, when we ask you guys, how are you financing? And you want to say, uh, well, I, I need to get a loan. We send you over to Mario. So you Mario, yeah, take yeah. it away. What happens in that process? So the mortgage pre-approval process or the responsibility of the loan officer essentially is to vet the borrower's um, qualifications as far as are they first eligible to qualify for a mortgage because there's certain criteria that come with eligibility. Mm -hmm. uh, do they have... Um, enough enough you know income assets so on and so forth so their financial liquidity things like that and not to overcomplicate but it's just our job to vet that borrower kind of through and through um which uh, can be a lot faster process than you might actually imagine hmm. um but should be more thorough than just a conversation right because that's uh <laughs> that's something very important when it comes to the mortgage pre-approval pre process especially if you're in a very busy, very active market where everybody's trying to submit an offer and everybody's trying to get their foot in the door, mm -hmm. is they may or may not talk to, um, you know, a bank or lender that is, um, you know, vetting them properly or thoroughly enough. That's good stuff. So, yeah, within that first conversation, we should be able to kind of, uh, you know, ask the questions that need to be asked to find out how close to being able to qualify they'd be. But from there is when you kind of really start digging in a little bit further. So, That's good. Okay. You know, it's good that you say that. You, you said, ask the questions that need to be asked. So what I'm going to ask of you guys, all of our audience, um, when you are talking to your loan officer, make sure that you are all the way truthful with all yeah. the things, right? Like we don't want, you know, no surprises or anything like that. Um, they're, they're for you guys. We are all for you. And so we want you when they when you're having that conversation, make sure that you 
give all the information so that he can help you make those those informed decisions yeah i literally have that conversation with every single one of my borrowers like the first time out Mm is like please whatever you can do whether we're on a you know first time meeting each other basis or it's a family member of mine that i'm working with it doesn't matter the comfortability Mm -hmm. but it's honesty i want you to be as open and honest with me as possible because as we move along the process I'm going to find out anyways. Right. So right. if you just tell them, <laughs> and that, and not to scare anybody, you know yeah. what I mean, but that just is the fact. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, you know, the quicker we figure things out, uh, the quicker I can come up with, um, you know, solutions to the problem. Cause that's mm-hmm. kind of the name of the game in my world yeah. is not to be, uh, someone that's creating problems. Mm. I'm the problem solver. That's right. So, that's so, so he's not the boogeyman, no, y'all. He's, definitely not. <laughs> he's for you. <laughs> a lot of people have that impression with it's bankers what, and yeah, lenders yeah. and yeah. finance and money. Uh, but our team, you know, again, it's a family team. We're working with your family team. Mm-hmm. Um, we're working for your family. It's, yeah. you know, it's essentially we're on your side. So yeah. that's kind of the name of the game. So good yeah. stuff. I love so it. So speaking of not being the boogeyman or yeah. the bad guy, um, you solve problems and you provide solutions for people who need to get financing for a home. 100%. So as far as on the personal side, you know, me, uh, me growing up, I saw my aunt and uncle, they owned a small brokerage in Cincinnati, Ohio. And that's what inspired me to get into real estate. I awesome. saw my uncle driving a Cadillac and I was like, 100%, wow, man, what does he do? I want to that's do that. It. So that's what inspired me to get into real estate. So what inspired you to get into the mortgage industry? It's a great question, man, and it really is. Has it's been a lifelong thing for me as far as um, the mortgage industry. So, as Nikki said in the beginning, uh, our team here, the Escobedo team at Model Mortgage One, is myself, both of my younger brothers, mm-hmm. and of course, the matriarch of the whole group is my mother, yeah. um, Ann Escobedo, who's been, like I said, here in the mortgage industry for th- nearly thirty years now. Um, mm-hmm. You know, here in Las Vegas. Um, with that. I just turned uh, a couple months ago 35 years old. All right. So literally all of my life, I've been in and out of offices just like this. Mm-hmm. I've been at title companies, you know, for <laughs> signings. I've yeah. been literally everywhere in this industry since I can remember, since yeah. before I was in first grade. So, wow. um, I mean, it essentially was that. Mm-hmm. Um, to be honest with you, I, you know, growing up in the mortgage industry and real estate industry and so on and so forth, I pushed away from it in the beginning as much as possible. Um, But it's just something that when you're around as much as I was and you're familiar with it as much as I am, it just pulls me, pulled me, you know what I mean? It it chose me. I didn't choose it. So (laughs) that's that's really, truly it. And I really honestly believe in that kind of premise of, you know, families helping families. It's the motto that we, no pun intended, (laughs) that we uh, built our team on um and that's what i'll continue to preach kind of as we do you know families helping families for sure so that's that's what brought me back to the mortgage industry so yeah that's awesome that's weird because it's like my kids they don't want that they don't want anything to do with real estate Watch. right It'll now change. it will change but, my yeah. friend i feel like that's it will change it will change yeah let's mark this day all right kids <laughs> it, it'll change <laughs> yeah we'll yeah see. we'll see we'll go back on this day and say remember that video 100%. but it's a blessing to grow up in the mortgage industry real estate industry yeah. because you know, it's a lot of learning curve yep. and years of things. And, you know, you always have that, I call it OG uh, experience that you, can, that you can lean on. So I'm sure I still call my aunt every now and again, mm-hmm. like, hey, I got this situation going on. So that's a blessing to yep. grow. A lot of people take that for granted, yeah. you know, that they have a relative or somebody that they yeah. know in the industry. And uh, it really can catapult you and motivate and i was always held close to the industry anyway so in high school instead of having a regular job at the mall or whatever the case may be me and all of my friends worked in some capacity for my mom Mm -hmm. so you know we'd have some that answered telephones receptionists we had some that go pick up coffee we would have some so you know we were lucky enough she had her own office at the time and i you know was working with her essentially from the age of 16 until i was like 21 so a while and that was during, you know, the 2003, 4, 5, 6, 7 mm-hmm. periods, which mm-hmm. was like the craziest time right. ever yeah. in the mortgage <laughs> industry. Yeah, so, time yeah. yeah, you just pull all these experiences and knowledge and it, it would go to waste otherwise. So I feel yeah. like I should leverage it as much as possible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. yeah, so true. So true. So um, 
have you seen any big changes in let's go back to to business yeah yeah 100 have you seen any big changes as far as pre-approval values um in this current market you know pre-approval process i i have i mean just kind of like what i was saying earlier with the um rush to get everyone to buy a house mm -hmm. right and i have a lot of borrowers and clients of mine that come to me that had already been pre-approved elsewhere mm -hmm. or speaking to someone elsewhere that was just leading them down the wrong path mm -hmm. meaning they weren't educated enough they weren't familiar enough with the process right. they didn't know what qualifications were truly needed to get you know past stage one because once you get your offer accepted as i'm sure a lot of you know that's when you're off to the races that's when it becomes very real mm -hmm. so you know my team and i uh as far as the beginning stages with a borrower are very very important you know we are the ones that uh when we're pre-approving or qualifying a borrower borrower we're the ones doing the processing you right. know it's not getting okay. passed along to a third party or right. someone else that's sitting in an office that doesn't know that borrower it's us walking the borrower through each stage of the process and educating them as we go. Mm -hmm. So I've seen the industry change a lot recently with how hot the market's been on the real estate side and the right. buyers and so forth, where everyone's just trying to push everyone to the front of the line and it just doesn't work that way. So mm -hmm. you, know, you just got to really be uh, thorough. Make right. it yeah, that was one of the major concerns I had is like property values went up so fast, so yeah. quick. And it doesn't always, you know, inflation, people getting income increases don't, exactly. don't match up with the prices. So it's like uh, one of the concerns that we had is our clients being basically some of our clients that actually get priced out of the market 100%. because yeah. income didn't go up at the same rate exactly. as property value. So yeah. that's one of the things that we, you know, have to navigate on the realtor mm -hmm. side. And I know you see yeah. it more on the financial side, um, even more. 100%. Yeah. And if, I mean, if you set the proper expectations with the borrower, explain to them what exactly is going on, because mm -hmm. they have no idea, yeah. right. um, then it's, it just makes for a much smoother process. So again, yeah. as you said, with the property value is going up, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean income's going up or right, right. pay yeah. rates going yeah. up, or whatever the case may be. Exactly. Um, so the borrower needs to know how to interpret that and what that means for their qualifying scenario. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it can go even further than that when it comes to appraised values and so on and so forth. Yeah, um, true. But, you know, you don't want to get too into the weeds in the beginning, but just educating along the process is super, super important. So. Yeah. I mean, start off with a good foundation with your loan officer. And it's yeah. going to go much smoother. Yeah. So um, if you um, need a loan officer, if you're interested, we're going to have Mario's information down below in the comments. So all you got to do there is click go. away. You can send an email um, and we will get you hooked up. All yeah, right. Sure. Let's ask some more questions. This is getting good. Feeling it, feeling this it. is yeah, getting good. good. We're in a good uh, group here. I know, right? Okay. So <laughs> uh, tell us, Mario, what's uh, the biggest myth or misconception that people have about mortgages or about getting a mortgage? Um, I would probably say kind of what I touched on just a minute ago with, mm -hmm. um, you know, where your opposition, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? As far as like the qualifying process, mm -hmm. granted, obviously we're doing everything in our power to make sure all the information I'm collecting is accurate. It's, uh, you know, honest, accurate, and, you know, we're able to provide, uh, you know, documentation for it, but we're on your side. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We're trying to help you. And like I said earlier, educate you throughout the process because it doesn't need to be as daunting as it seems, Yeah. to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. The That's process, you know, it can be still distilled down into a very simple process if explained correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's when you start introducing a bunch of, uh, you know, these variables that weren't, you know, anticipated by the borrower or expected by the borrower where mm -hmm. it starts becoming very confusing and, oh, I got to provide this now. I got to get that piece of paper. I got to... Yeah. Uh, no, we're here to help you. Mm -hmm. uh, in the very beginning, let me show you what I'm going to need mm -hmm. uh, in a very easy outline mm -hmm. and go from there. Yeah. If I can, you know, help you along that road, uh, I obviously will, but it's just going to be simplified for you from the very beginning. So. Yeah, I think so, one of the biggest oh, things ahead, is uh, <laughs> still <laughs> like twenty twenty one is a lot of people still think that you need twenty percent to crazy right for a down yeah. payment to buy a house and it's like I guess twenty twenty one and people mm -hmm. still don't know that you don't have to have twenty I mean it's great if you do yeah. the more yeah. you put down the better 
um, the glory of mortgage payment is, but that's like one of the biggest things that I see is some people still think that you have to put 20% down and they're waiting to yeah. buy or waiting to call you or waiting to yeah. call me until they have that 20% to yeah. put down. So. It's it's kind of amazing what you can do in today's world, um, you know, through a traditional conforming conventional mortgage or FHA mm -hmm. mortgage, mm -hmm. VA, if you have eligibility, of course, is the creme de la creme. But uh, yeah, you, you know, 20% down as of, you know, 1975 or 1980 <laughs> was the way to go or the only way to go. Right, right, right. Um, but, you know, in today's world with as little as 3% down on the conventional side, um, you know, you can become a homeowner with very little closing costs. Like I said, the 3% down payment is as low as it can get unless you have, of course, the VA eligibility. Um, and it is a true traditional conforming conventional mortgage. You know what I mean? There's no yeah. hidden fees to it. Yeah. There's no additional cost to it. And that's uh, one of the things with down payment assistance programs that although are available and can be very beneficial to some borrowers, uh, they have a criteria that most borrowers uh, don't fall into, whether it be their income, zip mm -hmm. codes, uh, qualifying uh, scenario, so on and so forth. So again, as little as 3% down, you qualify for uh, you know a conventional mortgage with none of these barriers or restrictions in place. So, yeah. um, incredible. Yeah, the buyer has all of the power right now. I would say, as far as you just have a have, have to have a little patience. Mm -hmm. You have to have a little bit, little knowledge, yes. and then a good team on your side. So right. that's the most important for sure. Absolutely. So speaking of waiting, you said waiting, and and we say that um, because some people want to like make sure they have that 20 percent down or they're waiting for you know the right credit score or things like that let's say someone has a desire to buy a home in the next 12 months mm -hmm. when is a good time to reach out to you the first day that they have that idea um <laughs> right. to, to be perfectly honest with you i'm, yes. not, I'm not just saying that because yes. i'm a, a, lo a mortgage loan originator or whatever the case may be because I myself am a homeowner now as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I just recently purchased a home for my wife and I. Uh, we closed last month. Hey, thank you. For the <laughs> um, but again, it was something that as soon as I had that my idea in my mind uh, that I needed to make it happen, aside from me being in the business and being uh, a loan originator myself, right. um, I knew what I needed to work on to make that happen. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, of course, with some of my experience comes um, knowledge. But, you know, that you also have to ask the right questions. So right. if you don't ask the questions or speak to a professional that otherwise, uh, you know, could lead you down the process, where where are you? Like, where exactly. do you go? Right. Because, you know, credit repair is a whole beast in itself. It it's is. something that most people, I would, I would guesstimate that if you're in the credit repair industry, you probably don't understand it entirely, right. to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, Say that. Not trying to shoot, you know, not, no that. shots fired. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Say there are a lot of times they just pass the work down to somebody else who really knows what they're doing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's up for translation as far as like what, you know, how do you go about the process. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the most important part of all of that is starting. Yes. Um, you know, speak to a professional, someone that really truly does have your back and your best interests in mind mm -hmm. and just get started from there. Because, you know, I was a long way from being able to qualify for, you know, the house that I purchased five years ago, three right. years ago, mm -hmm. two years, you know, whatever the case may be. Right. But you get yourself to that point mm -hmm. um, and it can happen very quickly, to be honest with you. So, That's it, so good. yeah, it's just having the right team behind you and, the you know, action. That's right. so good. So you guys... So when you say, well, you know, I want to buy a home, but, you know, I don't want to buy it, you know, right now. I want to wait. I still am going to send you to Mario. I'm still going to send you to a loan officer because I want you to start that relationship. Mm -hmm. I want you to start that conversation. I want you to, to spill your guts to Mario so that he knows, yeah. you know, <laughs> what your goals are and where you're trying to be so that when you say, hey, for 12 months from now, I'm going to buy, we are on that right path and yeah, we can make it happen. So I love the, that answer. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I, I just, just remember the house should come second in my opinion, because mm. you want to have the most important part of everything, the money side, ready to go. Yes. You, know I mean? you want right. to know that I have the financing available mm. to be able to purchase whatever my dream house or my yeah. starter house or whatever house would come your way when you mm. do end up going to look. Yeah. Um, and it, really changes the experience because when you walk in that door mm. to see the house yep. you're confident knowing that you're ready to 
make an offer that's going to get accepted, yeah, you know, yeah. so on and so forth. So, mm -hmm. I believe the the house should come second. Uh, the you know the beginning stages of everything should be the qualifying and absolutely. all that good stuff. So that conversation at the very least. So. Absolutely, yeah. and we hang in there with you. We don't just you know send you to a loan officer and say, <laughs> "All right, good luck." You know, yeah. I will call me when you have a a a pre approval letter. But we all walk. Most with do you. that, by the way. They do. Yeah. Most yeah. Do that, so. um, but um, those that of you that work with the Willis team know that you know we stay in touch with you. I'm, I'm a big you. cheerleader. I was a cheerleader back in high school, hey. and I cheer you on. So you know when Mario says, "Hey, they're super close," or you know we're about a month away, or things like that. You know you're gonna get that phone call from yeah. me saying, "Yes, we're so close. Keep going." You know, don't do anything crazy. You know the whole nine yards. But um, but this is such great information, Mario. Because yeah, people, you're guys enjoying. yeah, because yeah. you know a lot of people in our audience just don't know. You know that they can start very early building that relationship mm -hmm. with a with a knowledgeable loan officer. Yeah. So again, guys, that information is down below. Y'all go ahead and start calling and emailing. There you go. Let's get these relationships built and let's get these goals let's get these goals cracking. Okay, we got one more question. Last question. Cool. Yeah, one okay. more question. Right. One question that I ask all of our people that we interview, all of our guests is mm -hmm. in the industry that is, what is the craziest experience or the the most craziest individual you had to deal with in your experience of being in this industry. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in the safest way possible <laughs> to protect my borrowers' anonymity. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, I'm but I'll give you a nice. general. No, definitely not. I'll give you a general um, scenario that every single person in our industry deals with, and then I'll give you how this um, kind of transpired. Okay. So every time we deal with somebody on the mortgage side, real estate side, you know, whatever the case may be, there's a general like line that we share with everyone kind of as a joke. You would, I would hope it would be a joke, but a lot of people still need to hear it just to be extra sure is we tell everybody don't go out and buy a car. Mm -hmm. Don't open up any new yes. credit cards yes. 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 and yes. don't yes. quit your job before yes. you get the house. Yeah. Um, Right, you would think that is very common sense, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Regardless if you have the conversation or not, I have now seen that happen, uh, and I consider myself quite good at what I do, or whatever yeah. the case may be. Yeah. Communication, yeah. whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. yes. I've still seen it happen twice. Um, it yeah, which luckily it's only been twice, um, but and they were actually close friends of mine. Mm. But it happened. I had one particular client of mine. Um, literally after we had already signed our closing documents and we were waiting to fund the loan, mm -hmm. um, quit her job. Ooh. Oh. So, and it, you know, we got lucky it was quitting for another job in the same industry. So, you know, I already knew how to approach that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, until you get those keys in your hand and we say that you are done and good to go, Please continue right. the process yes. as is. Don't change don't. anything um, because it's, you know, it's very, very important that you don't do that. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. that was for sure the craziest. It was like at that, you know, ninth hour of yes. being that able is to. Gonna, about to fund the loan means like you should have yep. the keys, but then they go and they exactly. take them back. <laughs> because so yeah, we don't want that. Yeah. Every lender is going to do what's called a verbal verification of employment at the very yes. end. Sometimes yeah. it's right before you sign mm -hmm. uh, closing. Sometimes it's right after. So you ne never really know. They do that, obviously, for, you know, uh, Whatever they, they want why to pay yeah this loan back, they want to, yeah they don't want to pay this loan back, but they want to make sure you pay this loan hundred percent so yeah just keep it one hundred until you get those keys in your hand uh, please yes 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 yeah. that's so you know I think that's like one of the like most common nightmares in the real estate industry it's like don't we know of a story of a guy who um, bought a home for his then girlfriend mm -hmm. gonna be fiance okay. and right when they were about to close he got a ring yeah so he could not get uh, oh boy on yeah. a credit card no he got a, a ring on, on a, a credit, credit card oh, that's <laughs> what okay well, yeah, yeah. That's not good. so yeah so couldn't get the house i hope the ring was worth it and hope, yeah. you know, and hope they uh Yikes. still got married but yeah so those types of things guys we try to 
yeah. communicate as much as possible yeah um to to keep you from those things 100%. and yeah and mario does a great job you do do a wonderful job at communicating mm -hmm. and we appreciate you oh, for coming you're very on welcome. yay you're very all right, guys. Well, before we go, just a reminder, make sure you subscribe. We have awesome guests like Mario who come on and share all the things about real estate and the real estate industry and how you can purchase a home with the real estate, with the Willis team. Easy so, Yes, yeah, super easy, <laughs> right? All right, so we will see you guys next time. Bye. See ya.